everybody, Cupcake the Hyena here, and if you can't tell by the video title below, this is going to be kind of a Q&A as to my involvement in the furry lifestyle or furry fandom. First thing, come, first thing is, I have been on a part of the furry fandom, I guess you could say since I was about 11 or 12. What started this, with, for me anyway, happened to actually be a kind of infamous episode of CSI that involved a furry convention and a murder. I really suggest you go check it out if you haven't seen it yet. I mean, it's been out for 18 years, but, you know, some people, I'm old. <laughs> anyway, um, other than seeing that episode, I've always been a fan of anything that involved talking animals, talking dinosaurs, Land Before Time, Lion King, the Aristocats. It's always grabbed my attention. I've always drawn pictures of animals doing personified things, which is now called anthropomorphism. Um, if you don't know what that means, uh, you can put the wiki article in my comments if you'd like for everyone else. Um, the furry fandom is a place mostly uh, with a lot of artists usually uh, making suits, drawings, digital artwork, animations. It's a very artistic group. Now, I saw that episode of CSI, coming back to how I became part of this fandom, I have a tendency to ramble, but I saw that episode and I was like, huh, people can do that? I really didn't know what a convention was, I didn't know what a furry was, and eh, so I just kind of forgot about it for several years. But it did, in, it did impact my artwork, that because I've always liked to draw. And around the time I was 15, I was on MySpace. I had a picture of a fox pirate as my profile picture. And somebody asked me if I was a furry. I was like, furry? Type into Google. And it brought me to a site called Cityan.net. I don't know if it's still around, but that had amazing furry artwork. And... I was kind of hooked from there. But I kind of kept it to myself, the fact that I was into this. I didn't have a suit or anything like that. I did like to wear like a tail for a costume or ears. And I kind of kept it to myself. Well, quite a few years later, I'm looking on eBay and things like that and seeing suits and... It was kind of a guilty pleasure. I didn't really know how to broach this to my husband, Jack, who's behind the camera. You have seen him in other videos. Say hi, Jack. Hello. And I said, I kind of want, I want to talk. I, I need to talk to you. No guy likes hearing that, or, or nobody in a relationship likes hearing that. We need to talk. And I'm like, I'm a furry. Oh, what? I'm a furry. <laughs> and, of course, that led to me showing him videos on YouTube and things. And, of course, he didn't understand it. But we're together and he accepted that I was different. Hard to do air quotes with pause, but different. So, a couple years go by and I really want a fursuit head. I had you know, ears or a belt tail or something, but I really want a head. So I got my first head, which you can see on my Instagram or Twitter, which is Candy. And this is my second head. This is Cupcake. And lately I've been making heads. But anyway, that's how I became a part of this amazing, accepting, artistic fandom known as the Furries. Now, there are some questions that I have been asked when people either find out I'm a furry or I trust them enough and openly tell them. Well, hey everyone, my name is Scorn and I don't usually do these things. Usually this is Liz or cupcakes or even candy stick, but they figured I needed camera time, so... Here I am. <sighs> anyway, one of the most common questions that furries get, 
Do you have sex with animals? Bleh, bleh, bleh. No. Yes, there are extremists in every group, but on the whole, no. Just because someone dresses like an animal doesn't mean they want to be an animal. It doesn't mean they want to have sex with an animal. Moving on. Do you have sex in costume? No. Does that even look like something you want to have sex with in costume? No. Seriously? <laughs> but, no. It would be the equivalent of wearing <clears throat> a Italian suit and then go roll in the fucking mud. Or it would be the equivalent of going outside to your nice Lamborghini and jumping up and down on it. You, it's just not something you do. Are there people that get fursuits specifically made for it? Yeah. But do I care that they do? No. That's their money. That's their body. And good 99% of the time, they're legal consenting adults having sex. If you're going to be dumb enough to think that these adults are not having sex, then you're dumber than people think that us circles are. Anyway, there's also, what is a furry? If you're too lazy to Google it and you clicked on a video to get me to explain it to you, then you're going to get my version of it. Anyway, a furry is a person that identifies as a member of the furry fandom. You can have a suit without being a furry. You can be a furry without having a suit. It's if you identify as one. I identify as one. But that's me. You can enjoy putting on cat ears and a little cattail and skipping around in your house without being a furry. You're just weird. And I love you for it, but... Anyway, so these are three of the most common things that I've been asked. If you have any other questions for me, for Cupcake, for Candy, for Liz, for Jack, or wh whoever else appears on this whole fucking channel, just put them down in the comments. I don't see why no one's commenting. Y'all, you guys can type to put hate on the internet, but you can't type a comment? Really? Type in the comments, or, I don't know, check out Liz's Instagram or Twitter, and tweet out any questions you might have, and who you want to answer them. Do you want me to take try to take my time to answer them? Ugh. I hate, I don't want you to, but I'll answer them if I have to. Or do you want Cupcake to answer them? Or do you want Candy to answer them? Ugh, them and their positive personalities. Anyway, if you want to ask a furry anything that's not a pop -ya fur, ugh, then type. Anyway, that being said, how about you go have a good fucking day?